Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rich Castellano, the Smile Doctor, and we are talking about facelifting procedures and what are the risks that you need to know about before you choose your treatment. I discuss with my patients that, of course, safety is always first, and we actually hire an outside consulting firm to monitor all of our practices in the office to continually raise our standards. The risk I tell my patients about is what I'm gonna to describe to you right now. Risk of bleeding or fluid collection, we can handle that in the office. Infection risk, we prevent this by keeping you on an antibiotic and we can change the medications as needed. Damage to surrounding structures, risk of a weak lip or eyelid, the procedure is designed to stay more superficial to avoid that, and that has not been a problem in my practice. Sometimes a deep stitch can surface around the ear or under the chin like a splinter. This is simple to remove. The ears can be numb after the treatment. When the nerves grow back, you might feel itching, tingling, soreness, or even pain, which typically resolves in weeks or months. You may have some of these sensations that last up to a year or longer, but it usually resolves. The risk that you need a touch-up treatment is usually low, and if you need to come back for an additional treatment or tightening, that is always better than going too far. The risk that someone has a heart attack or stroke or requires hospitalization is rare. Local anesthesia facelifts are much safer than general anesthesia or IV sedation. Not every patient chooses laser resurfacing, and if this is something you're interested in, this is what I tell my patients. Laser risks depend on the depth of treatment you and your provider choose. The deeper you go, the more recovery, the more result that you're going to see. And of course, you need to avoid going too deep with the laser treatment so that you don't bleach the skin. And if you need to come back for additional laser treatments, again, that's better than going too far. We put our laser patients on antiviral treatments to prevent fever blisters or cold sores. We recommend that you stay shiny after the laser treatment and keep your face moist with Vaseline or Aquaphor for best healing. And patients can also perform vinegar soaks or chamomile tea as an antibacterial precaution and to gently cleanse the area. We do not recommend vigorous cleansing after laser resurfacing because you can deepen the peel or the laser treatment. And again, you don't want to go too far or too deep. Risks of scarring with the laser is uncommon as long as you don't go too deep, and this is why it is so important to make sure your provider is experienced, artistic, and conservative. Patients may tell me that I wanna look like something has been done to my face. Yes, of course we want others to notice we look good, but we don't want others to notice that we look obvious or unnatural. You don't want your appearance to be a distraction. This is why patients are choosing local anesthesia facelifts, less risk, less recovery, natural results, more safety. That's all for now. In our next video, we will be talking about the aftercare and your 24-hour appointment for your facelift. This is always exciting when someone is ready to do their lifting procedure. And these are the things that you really need to know ahead of time. And if you're considering a facelift, I'm really excited for you because consistently, my patients will tell me that they were not expecting how good it would make them feel. I am really honored to be a part of this with you, and I'm excited to see you in the next video to learn more about your facelift journey. We'll see you there.